last Sunday was a moment that we were preparing for the worst. And then we started to see some improvement, and we're thrilled, I'm thrilled to be able to tell you that just when we thought it was really going to get even worse, we started to see some improvement. And I'm the first one to always say, let's not overrate that improvement, let's not draw too many conclusions too quickly, but let's be very um, clear, and let's be willing to, of course, not only see the good, but see hope in the good. Last Wednesday, I told you we had seen something real that was the beginning of change, and that has continued over these last days. Starting tomorrow, we're going to give you a new set of information, a new set of indicators that will help us to determine where we go in the future. And I've said it's going to be three indicators that are going to watch every single day, and you're going to watch all of you because it's all going to be public. And we need to see those indicators move in the right direction consistently uh, to be able to start to talk about changes that we can make uh, to move us towards the next phase of fighting this epidemic. But what's so important to recognize is that even as recently as a week ago, we were seeing in our hospitals people coming in and needing to be intubated more every single day, more and more people needed those ventilators, more and more people would not live without them. A week ago, it was 200 to 300 more people each day coming in. Every day, 200 or 300 more than the day before. We thought that was even going to go up more. And then by Wednesday, we were able to say, no, in fact, thank God, that number had come down to about 100 people more per day. Still way too many, still more each day, but fewer than projected by a lot. Today, I can tell you that number has gone down again. 70 more people per day now is what we're seeing on average. But again, I don't want anyone to mishear it. It's not things are definitively, clearly, permanently getting better. It's still 70 more people each day, but it's a lot fewer than what we feared. When it comes to the equipment and the supplies that we need to get us through this next coming week, I'm very pleased to say, and I want to thank everyone, let me just say, Everyone, uh, everyone in our team has been working so hard, an incredible operation at our emergency management office where people from all agencies are working together. All of our colleagues in the private sector have been helping us, the federal government, the state government, FEMA, everyone who's been part of this, thank you. Uh, because we are now at a point where we can say for the week ahead, based on everything we know now, we will have enough ventilators to get through this coming week. I will keep updating you because we never know when something may change and we always have to have our guard up. And we're always looking for new supplies to get ready for what's ahead because this won't be over tomorrow. This is going to be weeks and months ahead. So we're not letting our guard down. But we do have enough ventilators based on what we know now to get through next week. Also on personal protective equipment, PPEs. For the coming week, and I'm going to talk about the crisis standard I want to emphasize, and I say this to all New Yorkers, but particularly to our heroic healthcare workers, that we've got to be always honest with you. No one can tell you truthfully that we're providing what would be the peacetime standard where we'd love to have a true abundance of PPEs of every kind that could be used once and thrown away. We would love to be in that situation. That's the situation we were in for a long time. We're not in that situation over these last weeks. Once this crisis hit in earnest, we went to a crisis standard. And that means always protecting our healthcare workers, always protecting our first responders and anyone who needs these PPEs, but with a standard that our CDC says and our health department says is acceptable, but not the one we would use in peacetime. Based on that crisis standard, we will have the N95 masks the surgical masks, the gloves we need for this week ahead. And I will say we will have the surgical gowns and coverings of different types and we'll have the face shields, but barely enough in those two categories. It's going to be a struggle this week to make sure that we get them to the right places, to make sure that they are conserved. Uh, this is something I've uh, spoken with uh, Commissioner Jimmy O'Neill about. Uh, that he's playing such an uh, extraordinary role making sure that our hospitals at the front lines in the hospitals are receiving what they need, distributing the right way, 
uh, doing what they have to do to support each other. This, this week's going to be one where we're going to be very dynamic and precise, making sure that each hospital gets what it needs in those categories. But for the next week, we absolutely must have resupply in surgical gowns and face shields. I've had this conversation with the White House. Uh, we are continuing to press the federal government. We'll, of course, press the state government, private sector. We're contracting everywhere we can, but trying to get those deliveries in on time, which is always a challenge in this environment right now. So this week, we will get through. Next week, we have real challenges we must address over the next few days. And again, when I say this week, I mean this coming week, the week just beginning Monday, we will get through the week after that. We have a lot we have to work on in advance. Now, let me talk to you about testing. This is an area where there's so much concern, obviously. And I just want to remind everyone this basic history and these basic facts. The basic history is we pleaded for weeks and weeks for the federal government to provide testing up front in the kind of quantity that could have helped us contain this crisis and change the whole course of it. We never got that help. We continue to plead for more testing still has not come any, anywhere near the numbers that we need. But we will not stop. We're continuing the conversations with the White House, with FEMA, demanding the testing. We are the epicenter of this crisis. We must have the testing to help us move towards that next phase where we get out of widespread transmission of coronavirus and move to low-level transmission and on to something better. Uh, we also have to remember that testing helps us in many ways, but it does not provide all the solutions. It is a fact that someone could test negative one day and a few days later tragically contract the disease and test positive. It's a fact that if you test negative, it doesn't mean let your guard down. You still have to take a lot of precautions. And it's a fact that if you test positive, you have to follow through and we have to help you follow through to protect your own health and the health of everyone around you. So there's a lot that has to be done to take testing and make sure it is used in the best way possible, but there still it remains the fundamental problem. There's just not enough testing. The priority has been clear. We have focused on hospitalized patients, those who were in greatest danger, those whose lives we had to work hardest to save. That was a testing priority. Protecting our healthcare workers, keeping them doing their life-saving work, protecting our first responders so they could protect us all. That's been where the priority has been in what's essentially been phase one of what we were able to do with testing. But now we're going to talk about phase two, where we intend to expand testing more to the community level as we get sufficient supply. And I want to emphasize every time I say the word testing, that it is contingent upon getting the supply we need. Uh, this is something that has to come from, I'm sad to say, outside this city. We, we cannot produce here in any kind of way that anyone's explained to me, at least. We need to get these supplies in from elsewhere. And the testing must come in for us to do phase two the way we intend. But here's why phase two is so important, and this will be targeted testing in communities with the greatest needs. I said the other day this virus is not the great equalizer. Uh, it does not, in the end, uh, have the same impact everywhere. It hurts people everywhere. Every community, every zip code has been affected, and we all know people who are suffering or even people who have passed away. But we see disparity. We see clear disparity in the impact. Who's been hit hardest? Communities of color, lower income communities, immigrant communities, folks who are vulnerable already because they haven't had the health care they needed and deserved throughout their life. We cannot accept this inequality. We have to attack it with every tool we have. So by the end of next week, we will create community testing sites. And these are targeted to have the biggest impact uh, we will create these sites in the following locations, and these are all health and hospitals locations in these communities, existing locations. In East New York, in Brooklyn, in Morrisania, in the Bronx, Harlem, of course, in Manhattan, Jamaica, in Queens, and the Vanderbilt Clinic uh, in Staten Island. Uh, we will be setting up a system, we'll announce the details soon, for people who live in those communities, particularly hard hit, to be able to access this testing. 
Uh, there will be a priorities uh, system focused on those who are most vulnerable. And again, to do this effectively, we're going to have to keep getting the supply of testing we need, and we're going to have to keep getting the PPEs we need, because remember, for the professionals who administer the test, they must be protected. We need those PPEs. So we are going to work uh, on a game plan that says let's keep finding uh, the tests, let's keep finding the PPE so we can get this up and running by the end of next week. We will update you on the details, uh, and obviously, if there's any changes in the specifics because of supply, we will update you on that. But here's the key point. The federal government really needs to step up. Again, I, they have not been doing what we all needed, and this is true all over the country. We have not gotten the help we needed on testing. Here's a chance to get it right. I will be asking the federal government today for test kits to allow for 110,000 individualized tests. Uh, that will allow us to get started with this community effort and to continue everything else that we are doing. Specifically, 25,000 of those t individualized test kits would be focused on health and hospitals for their current needs and for the new sites that I have just described. And we need to get these test kits in this week. Uh, if we can get that done, then we can keep building out our testing program. Now, this is a beginning. I want to emphasize those bigger phases we talked about a few days ago. To get to that next phase, that low-level transmission phase, we're going to need much more testing. To get to the phase where we've basically defeated the coronavirus and there's basically no transmission, we're going to need a lot more testing, uh, really, really widespread testing. We're nowhere near that now. This is what our national government should be focused on first and foremost if they're going to really help us get to those next phases here and everywhere. So I will have that conversation today with the White House again. But uh, this is going to be decisive in determining not only how we get through the next weeks, but how we get to something much, much better.